Hey, this is Chris Menard. Today I'm going to cover compound annual growth rate in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to also do the compound monthly growth rate. So if you are a YouTuber and you are tracking your subscribers, you need to watch this video. The compound annual growth rate tells you how you got from point A over to point B. So the year 2015, we had revenue of 100. In the year 2020, we had revenue of 248. So the first year, 2016, I went from 100 to 135. Obviously, that's the 35% increase, but there's the formula. And the next one's a 10% increase, and there's the formula. But I want to know what's my compound annual growth rate, which puts it as a steady growth rate. So the formula I already have over in column I, so just so I wouldn't have to type it again, but I'm going to break this formula out for you. Then I'll do it as one complex formula in Excel. So ending value divided by beginning value. 248 G4 divided by B4, the 100. That's 2.48. The next is 1 divided by the number of periods. The base year does not count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 periods, 0.2. And then also in the formula, I'm going to take the beginning divided by the ending divided by the beginning, but I'm taking it to the power of. So that's going to be equals that. That was shift in the number six on my keyboard, the caret symbol. That's 120%. If it doesn't show up as a percentage, it may show 120. You can just click the percentage. And then the final part of the formula, if you notice, is to subtract 1 over in column I. And I did some rounding here. So there's my 20%. If you break it out, though, it's technically 19.92. Ah, 20% works, though. Let's test it. So basically, I'm saying every year I had a compound annual growth rate of 20%. Really easy to test. Just copy your initial data, paste it. I'm going to highlight and get rid of these numbers. So I'm saying every year I'm growing at 20%. So there's 100, 20% added on, crosshairs, compounding is working. A little rounding going on there. It's 248.8 versus 248. But remember, it was actually, just to make it clear, 19.92. Here we go, 1.1992. Crosshairs, fill again. Right on the money. So 20% rounded up compound annual growth rate. If you want to see it as one formula before I started getting into analyzing customers, subscribers, one formula would be this. I'll put it right here. Equals, open parent 248, divided by, not minus, the beginning. And then I need to go to the power of now I'm doing the 1 divided by n, so that's going to be 1. Instead of typing in the number 5, I may want to actually use an Excel function. I'm going to do a count function. I could have done the number 5 and made it easier. Minus 1, because you don't take the base year. And I'm missing one open parent right there looking at this. There we go. Minus one. So there is your Excel function. All is one. 20%. See if it works. Yep, 19.992. In case you're wondering, why would I use the count function and just not type the number five? I may come in here and tweak that function so if I add years later, it's still correct. So, so I did a count, which gave me the number 6 minus 1, plus my numbers match up since I did G4 divided by B4, the 248 and the 100. It just makes it easier for me when I'm looking at it to say, okay, I picked it all up and I subtracted 1. 
Now, here's what's so cool about compound annual growth rate. I'm still going to do compound monthly, and I'm going to tell you when not to use compound annual growth rate. You can use that to predict out in the future where you're going to be. So if I'm 248 in the year 2020, I'm just going to type it there. Where will I be in five years? That's going to be equals... 1 plus, I'm actually going to use the correct number, then I'm going to take that number five years out, I'm going to take the 248, that's where I'm at today, I'm going to take the 248 and take it to So I got 615. We'll see if that's right. Five years out would be 2021. There are five years out equals that plus the 248 times Two ninety-seven. Let's see if I end up with six fifteen, and I do. We are in business, so there is your formula, right there. I know someone's going to ask me this. Can you just show the formulas? Yeah, formula text. I could have put this all as one formula too. There you go. All right, so you can use the compound annual growth rate to predict where you'll be in the future. So instead of looking at compound annual growth rate, you can also look at compound monthly growth rate. Why would you want to do this? Here's a great example. I am a YouTuber, so here's my YouTube dashboard pulled up. If you notice, I have 2,592 subscribers. It is June 9th, 2019. Let's keep this easy on myself. Act like that was 2,592 at the end of May. So here we go. So May 2019, 2592. I've already calculated using the same formula, using the exact same formula that I did up here, that my compound monthly growth rate for YouTube, my number of subscribers grows about 8% every month. So now that I know my compound monthly growth rate, I'm going to quickly predict that 8%, I forgot how many months we out said, let's go out 12 months. I want to know where I'm going to be in 12 months. That is 12 months. Here we go. 8% equals that plus that number times 0.08, 8% compound monthly growth rate. I should therefore be next May 2,527 subscribers. Let's see if that works. Equals that number 2,592 to how many months out and what percentage 1.08 for 12 months there you go equals B19 times 1.08 for 12 months out 6527 6527 perfect match so that's why compound annual or compound monthly growth rate is so important. You can predict where you'll be in the future. But now that I've said that, let me just take this in just a little bit. Here's where you have to be extremely careful with this. So let's say one more time, I'm going to copy this. Hey, this is good stuff, right? We've already figured out that we're growing at 20% based on those numbers. But here's where you have to be really careful. 
I'm just making up stuff here. 400, 325, two. Look at that. That 100 to 248, point A to point B is still 20%. The problem is every year if I charted this, the first year I grew, 2016, I went way up, but then every year I'm losing stuff. So that's one thing you have to be careful with with the compound annual growth rate. So it doesn't handle the fluctuations uh, very well. It also doesn't handle more investments. So a lot of times this will be used for an investment. What happens if I invest $100 today? Where will it be in five years? What's the compound annual growth rate? Well, it's 20%. So that was an investment. It also doesn't handle invest. If I keep investing, I put in $100 initially, but let's say every year I throw in another $50. It's not taking into account of that. So it's the initial number to the last number. Anyway, it is great information to know, especially if you're a YouTuber, especially if you're a company and trying to predict where you'll be in the future. Compound annual growth rate. Thank you for your time. I went a little long on this one, but I think I had to. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day.